Hi, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to be doing the steel beam analysis. The first step you'll take is you'll go and select the analysis tab. Under the analysis tab we will select beam. This will open the interface of your beam analysis or your single span beam analysis. By default we'll even put interface will be opened. The first step we'll take is we'll select our section. You have various shapes you can choose from, from materials such as steel, concrete and timber. For this example we will be doing steel. There are a number of shapes you can select including I sections, H sections and you can even customize. For this example we'll be using the I section, WebVert. As you can see on the right hand side there are various dimensions you can choose from. Some of these dimensions are fixed to standards while others are just what you get through manufacture. For this example we'll be using the 305 by 165 by 40. When you select this section you'll notice that your section designation will be automatically filled. Your Young's modulus will also be filled automatically. This is based on the section. The weight of your beam will also be automatically put into your loads interface. Firstly we would like to fill the beam data table. The length will be the first value we'll put in. For this example we'll put in 5.5 meters. Now that you notice is when I enter the value a diagram will appear. This diagram represents our beam. It shows the dimension of our beam, 5.5 as put in by the table. It also shows the current load that is being applied to our beam. You also see that automatically there are pinned supports on our beam by default. It will also show our Young's modulus and our elasticity modulus. As you'll notice your elasticity modulus is 206E6. Your e-value is by default. To change your e-value, you'll go to the e-value in your beam data table and you select one of two options. For this example, we'll choose a 25E6 KPA. Once selected, you'll see it changes on the diagram. Next step we'll take is we'll change our fixity. You have three choices in your fixity, from fixed, pinned or free. Fixed will be represented with this diagram. The fixed acts in the vertical and horizontal directions. You can also select from pinned, which is our default, as well as free in case of a cantilever. For this scenario we'll choose free for the left and we'll choose fixed for the right. Therefore we have made a cantilever. Now that we've filled in our whole beam data table, we can move on to our loads. For ease of use, we'll be using different rows for different loads. Please take note that this diagram represents all the symbols that apply to this diagram in this table. First step we'll take is we'll change the UDL. So for example, we would like our left side of our UDL to be 5 kN per meter. Press tab to go to the next block and we can say 2 for that side, for the right side. You'll notice that the UDL is now an odd shape, where the UDL is heavier on the one side or represented as heavier on the one side than the other. You'll also notice that we have 5.4 and 2.4. That means that it's this 5 plus the self-weight on that side and this load plus the self-weight on the right side. The A value represents the distance the UDL is from the left side of the beam. For this example, let's use 1.5 meters. You'll notice that the distance at the beginning of the UDL is from the left side of our beam is 1.5 meters, as specified by the A value. The B value represents the length of your UDL. 
as you can see by this diagram, is from the left edge of the UDL to the right side. For our B value, we'll change the length of our UDL. So as you can see from this diagram, from the left edge of your UDL to the right edge of your UDL will be represented by your B value, or just the length of the UDL. In this case, we'll make it 2 meters. Now you notice from this left side of the UDL to the right side, it is 2 meters. That is perfect and exactly how we specified by the B value. The next load we want to apply is our point load. We're going to start in the new row for the point load just to make it easier to read our loads. The point loads that we're going to add will be 5 kN. As you can see, the 5 kN is applied to the left edge of the beam. This is by default since we have not entered any value for our A. This A value represents the distance the point load is from the left edge of our beam. In this scenario, we'll make it 4 meters. As you can see, the distance from the left edge of our beam to the point load is 4 meters. If we wanted to add another point load, we can simply start a new row and we'll say, let's say, 6 kilonewtons. In the same scenario as the previous point load, we'll also change our A value, let's say 2 meters. You'll see now that we have the two different point loads as represented by our table. Another force we can add is the moment. We we'll started in a new row, we will make a moment of 8 kN per meter. Same as the point load, you'll see the default location of the moment is at the beginning or the left side of the beam. To change this, we'll change our A value. In this scenario, we'll make it 3.5 meters. As you can see, 3.5 meters from the left edge of the beam is our moment. If we want to change the direction of our moment, we can simply go to our moment and can use a negative. You'll see that the moment's direction will change. In this case, it changed from anti-clockwise to clockwise. After we've added our loads, we can change our ULS load factor. In this case, we're going to make all of them 1.2. And the moment we'll make 1. Once we've put in all our input values in the loads table, the beam data, and we've selected our section, we can go to the Output tab. Here, our deflections diagram, our shear force diagram, and our bending moment diagram will be represented. Please take note that your maximum deflection, the maximum moment, and your maximum shear will be represented on the top right corner of each diagram. Next, we'll select the calc sheet. The calc sheet represents all the values of the design. If we want to zoom in on the page, we can select this button. As you can see, the input tables that we put in the input interface, as well as our diagrams and the output, are all represented on this page. If you want to remove some of this information, let's say in this case the input tables, you select this button called the Output Settings. Here you can uncheck your input tables. And in this case we also uncheck the data file. When you press OK, you'll see a new page will be generated. Since we removed all the input and data files, only our diagrams are left. This will be our final sheet.